Good evening. Christmas is completely about the gospel. It's about our God who so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. To understand Christmas is to understand basic Christianity. It is to understand the gospel. Let's look at the record of Jesus' birth as given in the gospel of Luke chapter 2 verses 6 to verse 20. I'm going to read that for you. <clears throat> While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. How remarkable. But if Jesus' work had stopped at his incarnation, it would have been remarkable, but not redemptive. But he didn't stop just at the wonder of his birth. The wonder of the season is only possible because of the horror of the cross that he took upon himself 33 years later after his birth. Yes, Jesus was born as a baby, swaddled up tight by his young mother and placed in a manger. But that is only the beginning of the story. Christmas is only the beginning of the good news. It's not the end. It was fitting for baby Jesus to feel the, the tough enclosure of that rustic crib on his tiny back. But soon enough, he would hang from the splintered wood of a cross, bearing our sins. Our king didn't just come to rescue a few. News of his arrival didn't stop with only the shepherds. Jesus came to bring the good news to all people. What is this good news? That Jesus was willing to do whatever it took to obey the Father and become our Savior and our Shepherd. But what did he save us from? And that is the question we must force our hearts to ponder this Christmas season, my brothers and sisters. In the Gospel of Mark chapter 1 verse 21, it says, She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus wasn't born to deliver us warm fuzzies or to give us a mug of hot chocolate in our hand. But he came to deliver us from sin and death and give us eternal life in him alone. 
we see that Jesus was born for the redemption of fractured marriages, broken families, rebellious children, secret sins, relational turmoil, broken system, diseased bodies, and hopeless hearts. He was born to save sinners, the worst of us, and to redeem our hard, sad, impossible situations. Christ was not born for decorated trees, homes, and streets, though that's beautiful. But because we are a people walking blindly in the darkness of sin and in desperate need of a great light, our unmet expectations, ungrateful friends or relatives, as we see, or post-Christmas blues, aren't the sign that somehow we miss the reason of the season. They are very present reminders of why we need a savior so desperately. Do you remember the gap in the, between the Old and the New Testaments? In the history of Israel, we see there was a 400 years of divine dark silence. God's prophets stopped prophesying in that period. Priests stopped offering sacrifices. And kings stop leading their people in the history of Israel at that time. It was one of the darkest moments in the entire timeline of Israel's history and a stark reminder of the state of the kingdom before Jesus came. And everyone needed a permanent remedy for their sin problem. And we needed to be saved from the spiritual death that sin inevitably leads to. It was a historical picture of a personal problem. Without Jesus, our lives, our hearts are dark, not bright and merry. When things are continually bad in the kingdom, when we were deeply entrenched and lost in our sin, God didn't just send a message. He didn't use couriers to announce a royal edict. He came himself with a message of hope. He himself is the message we need. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 to 10, Paul writes, Christ saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. My brothers and sisters, it doesn't make for a cute Christmas card, but I need the reminder that I am a sinner, a hopeless sinner, Without Jesus' birth, his sinless life, his death on the cross, as horrific as it was, his burial, and then his glorious resurrection. I need the Lord Jesus. I just didn't need him. I need him every moment. And I will need him for all eternity. And Christmas is the good news that Jesus came to us, for us. Without the light of men, we'd all be forced to walk in perpetual darkness. But here's the good news. Jesus chose to wrap himself in humility, in weakness, and in humanity to save us. The gospel is what Christmas is really all about. Truly, Christ was born for this. And when we share the gospel, we join with the angels who first declared his birth. We join with lowly shepherds and wise men who came from afar to worship him. We join with the apostles and disciples who travel vast distances, going from town to town, city after city, to preach the gospel, to make disciples, and to plant churches. Beloved, this Christmas, let's recommit our lives 
once again to the mandate the Lord has given us to preach the good news. So let's celebrate and let's also declare his good news to all. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. The Lord bless your time together as you spend time as families. Worship with gratitude, remembering the great love of our Father that he gave his only begotten Son. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The Lord bless you.